looking for magic cards at flipsidegaming.com you can now use the promo code lvd to get a 10 percent discount on orders over ten dollars and starting from now you also get entered into the gills of ravnica booster box giveaway which runs until october 5th hello and welcome to another episode of wanky wednesday a weekly series where we explore wanky deck ideas in both standard and modern and this week we're taking a look at five color dragons in standard a base red deck that's supporting all the various legendary dragons from m19 and it's got a pretty nice dragon sub theme so let's take a look at the entire deck starting out with some of our cheap removal spells since we do want to stay alive until the point where we can cast our powerful dragons which is why we have two copies of magma spray dealing two damage at instant speed to any creature and if that creature would die it also gets exiled so it gets rid of pesky creatures like scrap heap scrounger for good then we also have the full four copies of a braid to deal with creatures and artifacts alike and then uh, two copies of treasure map which helps us smooth out our draw and also gives us a draw engine later in the game as well as fixing our mana which can also be relevant with our dragons then we get to our three drops where we have a lot of our dragon synergies we've got the full four copies of sark and fireblood a three mana planeswalker starting at three loyalty with two different plus one abilities the first one lets us discard a card and if we do we get to draw cards so helps us smooth out our draw get rid of excess lands or maybe excess copies of sarkhan and helps us look for those powerful dragons then the second plus one ability adds two mana in any combination of colors to our mana pool that we can spend on casting dragon spells so not only ramps us but also helps us fix our mana to cast our powerful dragons and then the minus seven is also game winning making four dragon tokens then we also have the full four copies of dragon sword which also helps us fix our mana by adding one mana of any color to our mana pool and whenever a dragon enters the battlefield under our control we get to put a gold counter on dragon sword and we can also tap the dragon sword and remove a gold counter to draw a card so also functions as a card draw engine later in the game then we have a copy of Spitflame as a nice recursive removal spell dealing 4 damage to any creature at instant speed and we can get it back from the graveyard for just a single red mana whenever a dragon enters the battlefield under our control and then we also have two copies of sweltering suns in the main deck as a nice sweeper effect dealing three damage to all creatures and we can also cycle it for three mana if we're not up against the creature deck and then at four mana we've got two copies of chandra torch of defiance as another powerful red planeswalker that can help us both ramp into our more powerful dragons as well as just provide some card advantage or deal extra damage to the opponent We've got two copies of Varric's Bladewing, which is perfect for this deck as either a 4 mana 4 4 dragon, or we can kick him for 7 mana total, making an additional 4 4 dragon token. And with planeswalkers like Chandra and Sarkhan ramping us, getting to 7 mana for Varric's Bladewing kicked is quite easy. And then we also have three copies of Nickel Bolas, the Ravager, which is a 4 mana 4 4 flyer. When he enters the battlefield, our opponent has to discard a card. And for 7 mana, we can transform Nickel Bolas into Nickel Bolas, the Risen, which is a very powerful planeswalker that can draw us cards or deal with problematic creatures or planeswalkers or reanimate things from the graveyard. Pretty much does it all. And since we are ramping thanks to Dragon's Horde, Treasure Map and Chandra, we can get to that 7 mana pretty easily. Sarkhan unfortunately does not let us uh, add mana to use the ability from Nicol Bolas, but everything else does. Then at 5 mana we've got the full 4 copies of Glorybringer as a 4-4 flyer with haste that we can exert to deal 4 damage to any non-dragon the opponent controls. And then we get to our more expensive legendary dragons where we have a Lathless Dragon Queen as a 6 mana 6-6 six, six flyer and whenever another non-token dragon enters the battlefield under our control we can make a 5-5 five, five red dragon creature token with flying and for 2 mana we can give plus 1 plus 0 to all our dragons until end of turn as well. Then we also have a single copy of Vivictus as another 6 mana 6-6 six, six flying dragon and when Vivictus attacks for each player we can choose a permanent that player controls that then has to be sacrificed and then each player reveals the top card of their library and if it's a permanent card it gets put on the battlefield right away. Then we also have a single copy of Palladia as another 6 mana 6-6 six, six flying dragon this time with Vigilance and Trample and also as Hexproof until it deals damage. And then last but not least we have one Derigas reincarnated as a 7 mana 7-7 seven, seven flying dragon with haste and trample and if Derigas would die instead it gets exiled with three egg counters on it and at the beginning of our upkeep we can remove an egg counter and if all egg counters are removed we get to return Derigas from exile onto the battlefield. Then going over the mana base we've got four canyons which we can cycle and a sheltered thicket. Then we've got a whole bunch of check lands that come into play untapped if we control a mountain. We've got four dragon skull summits one Clift of Retreat, one a Rootbound Crag and four Sulphur Falls as well as four copies of Unclaimed Territory naming Dragon to help us fix our mana for those multicolored dragons and then a few basic mountains to round out the deck and to make sure that all those check lands come into play untapped. 
Then going over the sideboard, we've got an additional copy of Magma Spray against the aggressive creature decks, two copies of Duress against control decks, two Chandra's Defeat against the red decks, a Bloodfast against control decks, two Spyglass, which is quite versatile, can come in against Teferi decks, two Doomfalls can also be used against control to maybe also catch one of their sideboarded creatures, a Sweltering Suns against Go White creature decks, two Hour of Glory to deal with problematic creatures that need to get exiled, and finally, two copies of Chromium the Mutable, which we can also bring in against control decks where we have more time to find the right mana to cast our Chromium. And of course, once we cast Chromium, it's very difficult for the opponent to deal with it. So that's the deck. Now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. All right, we're on the play. And how about this hand? Definitely a bit on the slow side. Don't have any Sarkans or Dragon Swords. But I think I'm going to keep either way and then hope our opponent doesn't have a particularly fast start. All right, irrigated farmlands, so this one's shaping up to be a long one. And at least our hand matches up pretty well against the control deck since we don't have any of our removal spells in hand, which would otherwise be dead cards. Ooh, Knight of Grace instead, so it's uh, not blue-white control after all. A braid's looking good here. So we'll just say go keeping up a braid kind of uh, see what happens here. And a Banalish Marshal. Uh, I guess we can just braid the Knight of Grace and then Chandra the Banalish Marshal here. Seems okay. This way we don't take any unnecessary damage. Well, our draw seems to be lining up quite well against what the opponent's doing. Next turn we could ramp out a Lathless, as our opponent plays Resplendent Angel. Hmm, interesting, so we've got a ton of options here. So ramping out Lathless has the highest upside, but if our opponent answers Lathless, then we also lose Chandra, while if we just Glorybringer the Angel, we don't run that risk. So that seems safer to me. Just uh, plus... Chandra, see if we can maybe top deck another Glorybringer, instead it's a Magma Spray, which we're not going to cast, and then we run out Glorybringer, and exert. Another Knight of Grace. Alright, so a ton of options once again. I think I like playing Lathless this time around. So we'll add two mana, play a Lathless. And I think I'm okay playing the land still in case they do deal with Chandra somehow. Then we still have the mana to play Vivictus next turn. And yeah, if we get to untap and play one of our dragons, it should be game over. I guess we'll plus Chandra first. We could also use Chandra to pump our dragons. And I guess that's also almost lethal. I guess our opponent could have some sort of seal away to deal with our dragons. So we want to play our other dragon's main phase. Opponent could also have something like a Supreme Will that they're splashing blue for, in which case we want to play Nicol Bolas instead of Evictus. Or we can add mana, and that also plays around Supreme Will. And trigger Lathless. And then we can attack and use Lathless's ability to pump our dragons, and our opponent concedes. Alright, so our draw lined up quite perfectly there, up against what looks like a blue-white aggro deck. Don't exactly know what the blue is for, could be that they're playing some sort of auras, could be that they're playing some counter spells. Uh, not entirely clear, but it feels like our Sweltering Suns is going to be okay, but might also be running History of Banalia, in which case Sweltering Suns lines up pretty well. Could also consider the Magma Spray, make sure we have more cheap removal. Uh, could see taking out at least one Sarkon on the draw, and maybe want to cut one of our top end cards here. I guess we'll go with Darigas and try something like this. Well, we can't keep a No-Lander. This is a bit better. Bottom the mountain. So we've got a turn one canyon. Then all our other lands come into play untapped. Or we could keep it to cycle, but again, our deck is pretty mana-intensive. 
and being able to curve out I think might be important. So I think I'll play the canyon here even though there's a chance we want to end up cycling it and are going to regret playing it here. But given the Glorybringer already in hand, we want to get up to 5 mana, so it's probably fine to play it. Alright, another Glorybringer. So we could Sweltering Suns next turn, we'll see what the board looks like. No Banalish Marshal this time. And the opponent missing their third land, so not really incentivized to kill the knight. And now that we picked up Spitflame, we can just Spitflame it instead. Alright, they do have Banalish Marshal, but now Sweltering Suns is looking pretty good again. Since that deals with both creatures, and we weren't going to play a 4-drop next turn anyway. So that uses up our mana pretty efficiently. Magma Spray as well as insurance, but Sweltering Suns looks pretty good here. And next turn we get to on top with Glorybringer. And that's going to deal with the Marshal while adding a threat to the board. Another Knight of Grace is not an issue. So do we Glorybringer again? Do we Spitflame and then next turn get back Spitflame while playing another Glorybringer? A wealth of options. Exerting another Glorybringer is probably fine here. I can't think of many cards our opponent can have that punishes us for playing another Glorybringer here. And this adds the most pressure to the board. I guess we don't even have to exert a Glorybringer here. Given the two removal spells in our hand, we can just Magma Spray the Knight. That's probably okay, actually. So this is the most aggressive line we have. That's the least value-oriented, since we're not getting back the Spit Flame from the Graveyard. And we're not exerting Glorybringer, so if they remove it, then... We will not have uh, been able to kill a creature with it. But given the second Glorybringer as well... It's unlikely their opponent deals with both of them in the same turn. So we'll attack for 8. And our opponent's dead next turn to any of our glory bringers connecting. And we even get to add a treasure map to scry with. So this game looks to be pretty over. And yep, opponent scoops it up. Alright, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play. And this hand seems acceptable. We've got a Dragon Sword to fix our mana and to help us ramp. And then we're looking at Bladewing into Palladia. And then we can start drawing some extra cards from our uh, Dragon Sword. So that seems acceptable. Opponent on Forest. We're fine just playing another Canyon here. Saying go. We even have the option of a turn for Nicol Bolas. Which is a bit better than a turn for Bladewing. Now we also have the option of a turn for Glorybringer, so... Can pretty much pick and choose which uh, dragon to go with, and in the face of a Steelleaf Champion... Glorybringer seems pretty good. Opponent's got a Thorn Lieutenant, that's okay. Alright, so now we have to decide what our follow-up is going to be. I think we're just going to draw with the Dragon Sword to get a bit more info. And then probably just play Nicol Bolas. But we drew Chandra, does that change anything? I think I still like Nicol Bolas more here. Make our opponent discard. Get another Dragon into play. Put another gold counter on the Dragon Sword. We were one mana short of going Dragon Sword into Nicol Bolas, otherwise that would have been a pretty decent play as well. Accumulating extra gold counters. 
opponent appears to be on a mono green deck splashing red, maybe for a Sarkons and Ceiling. And there we see Gigantosaurus. 5 mana for a 10 10, which is quite tricky for us to deal with since uh, we don't have any clean removal spells to deal with the 10 10 here. Uh, but we do have Nicol Bolas, which, if he can transform, does deal 10 damage to a creature. So that's going to be our plan here. And by playing another Dragon Sword, we can achieve that. Chandra and Glorybringer is only 8 damage. So we for sure want to get the Dragon Sword in play this turn. So I guess we can go Dragon Sword into Varric's Blade Wing, or we can go Dragon Sword into Chandra. But Chandra doesn't really accomplish all that much. So how about we attack for 8 first, since we also just have a 2 turn clock in the air. And then I guess going Dragon Sword into Varix is probably our best play here. Since that has another lethal dragon our opponent has to deal with. And if our Nicol Bola survives, then we have an answer for Gigantosaurus. And our opponent scoops it up. Alright, so on to sideboarding against Mono Green, Splashing Red. So this is where Hour of Glory comes in to have a clean answer to those giant green creatures. And do we want anything else? Doomfall can be okay if they only have one large creature in play, but it's tricky to pull that off. What cards don't we like as much? I could see shaving on some number of the larger creatures that don't match up particularly well, like Palladia and maybe Darigas. And then maybe make room for the Doomfalls anyway. I could see Sarkon being a bit weaker on the draw. And now that we took out a few of the expensive dragons, it's less of a necessity. And I think we'll try this. Magmus Brick can still catch Lenor Elves. Uh, so I think it's still fine. Same with the Braid. And uh, Sweltering Suns can also catch multiple creatures if we're lucky. Alright, so this hand on the play would maybe be a keep. On the draw, it seems too slow to me. As we don't have any early interaction. But we do have some cheap interaction we could potentially draw into. So I could definitely see a world where we should mulligan this hand. But I think I'm going to keep it and then hope our opponent doesn't have the fastest start. Or that we just draw into one of those cheaper removal spells in the following few turns. We also already have our black mana in case we top deck a uh, Hour of Glory, which is nice. Opponent did not have the turn 1 elf, which is good. So do we play Canyon or Thicket? Suppose we play the Thicket. Since we might want to cycle the Canyon and we might want green mana in play. And no turn to play from the opponent either, so... I guess we're doing okay, all things considered. We'll cycle the Canyon end of turn, since we're drawing nothing but land here. But not being under any pressure so far is definitely good for us. And a Thrashing Brontodon is not as bad as a Steelleaf Champion would have been. So let's cycle. And Unclaimed Territory is not exactly what we want. And another a Glorybringer. Alright. Let's play a Sulphur Falls. Say go. So we did not find the cheap interaction we were looking for. But on the bright side our opponent didn't have the fastest start. Still going to be in trouble if they land a Gigantosaurus, though. Since Chandra and Glorybringer are not good enough, and a Vine Mare is also an issue. That's why Sweltering Suns could still be useful. And there it is. Well, I guess we go for it here. And then next turn we can Glorybringer to get rid of the Brontodon. And I don't think we want to take 5 from the Vine Mare here. Just gonna go for it. Opponent being almost mono green might mean they also have the Blanchwood armor. So the fact that we brought in Doomfall I think makes sense since if they go all in on one creature then we have a pretty good answer. As it turns out, had we waited for Sweltering Suns we might have been able to get double Vine Mare. But we also would have taken 5 down to 9 in the meantime. So that's a tough call to make. So we're just going to run out Glorybringer, get rid of the Brontodon while we can, 
And then maybe we'll have to leave a Glorybringer back on defense to block Vinemare. Seems okay. So our best draw if our opponent doesn't play another creature would be Doomfall. Or I guess one of our larger dragons, like a Lathless, that can block Vinemare would also be pretty decent. Vevictus we can cast next turn, but of course can block Vinemare since he's black. But uh, did find a Dragon Sword instead. On the bright side, our opponent didn't add anything to the board. Maybe afraid to commit into another Sweltering Suns. So what is our play here? Probably just play Glorybringer and hit for four. Somehow try to outrace our opponent if we draw another Glorybringer. I guess we would be attacking for lethal next turn. That's probably our best chance. I don't think Chandra does much for us here. We'll name Dragon. And we're one mana short of going Dragon Sword into Glorybringer. And I think it's okay to attack here and go to 4, unless they have a crushing canopy to kill the Glorybringer. Alright, never mind. I was gonna say, I think we still attack even though we're taking 5 down to 4. And then if we did not find something to kill them, then we could stay back and try to block Vinemare. But our opponent with the sideboard crushing canopy, which is pretty efficient against our dragons. So now we will be forced to stay back with Glorybringer to try and block Vinemare. So we can go Dragon Sword into Chandra. That seems reasonable. And if we hit a Magma Spray, we can still play it. Instead, found a Mountain. So we're pulling down to 14, Glorybringer stays home, and hopefully they don't have another Crushing Canopy or something to pump up their Vinemare. Well, they had another Crushing Canopy, they must have drawn it for the turn since they didn't cast it end of turn. Alright, so two pretty nice sideboarded Crushing Canopies dealing with our Glorybringers, and Vinemare was enough to get the job done. Alright, let's see if we can maybe make some adjustments for game 3. So after seeing Vinemare, do we maybe want a third Sweltering Suns? I guess that makes sense. And now that we're on the play, maybe we want to reconsider Sarkhan. Although we are starting to have a few too many threes, so maybe three Sarkhans is enough. I don't think we want Chromium or Daraga, since they don't block Vinemares if we're on the defensive. And they still aren't large enough to deal with Gigantosaurus profitably. Although I guess Darigas can like block and then we can abrade Gigantosaurus to trade with it. And it does kind of race pretty well. So that might be an okay top end threat. Palladia does survive a crushing canopy until it deals damage. So that could also be a consideration here as just a more resilient threat. And then maybe we want to shave on the abrade since they don't seem to be matching up very well against what the opponent is doing. And I could see treasure map being a tad too slow. So I think we'll try something like this. Would like to be on the play. And how about this hand? We're a mountain away from a pretty reasonable hand. And we've got two draw steps to find it. We're playing 26 lands. Three of those are unclaimed territories which don't make red mana. I think I'm still gonna keep. Play Clifftop in case we top deck Magma Spray and need to use it right away on an elf. Alright, instead it's the Sweltering Suns. So let's see if we get there or if uh, we're gonna be stuck on two. Well, our opponent's attacking, so no Steel Leaf Champion at least. Just a Thorn Lieutenant, and we did not get there on the third land. On the bright side, if we do find a third land, the Sweltering Suns is looking pretty good. Especially if our opponent goes like Vinemare. And it does look like her opponent is playing a 4-drop, but instead it was Goreclaw. And we did draw a third land, and I guess what I didn't consider is that we don't actually have a mountain in place, so quite a few of our lands come into play tapped. 
So maybe there was actually a reason to mulligan since we didn't have a mountain and all our check lands come into play tapped. Oh well, we drew it, so we'll play it. And we're gonna take a beating from Goreclaw. But then hopefully Sweltering Suns can catch us back up. Alright, we're taking 8 here. And a Merfolk Branchwalker is fine. Reveals Galta Primal Hunger. And they don't have a Galta in hand already. So the Sweltering Suns is going to do quite the job here. And now that they kept the Galta on top, they're pretty far away from casting it if this works out. Alright. So the game's not over yet. Let's see if our opponent kept some goodies in hand. Well, looks like we're in the clear. Hour of Glory currently uncastable since we didn't have any black lands yet. So we could either play a Varric's Bladewing, which is a 5 turn clock, or we can play Sarkon and start smoothing out our draw since we're gonna need to have the acceleration from Sarkon, I think, that lets us cast Vivictus next turn, which is pretty sweet. And finding black mana for Hour of Glory would be nice as well. Opponent might also be holding some crushing canopies in hand at this point, so playing Sarkon over Varix makes sense to me. And find the Spit Flame. That's also something we could discard for value. And there's Territorial Allosaurus. Not as difficult to deal with as a Gigantosaurus, but still kind of a headache. We're one mana short of going Glorybringer plus Spit Flame. I think we still try and get one of our six drops in play this turn and hope for the best. Looting with Sarkon seems a bit too risky, since we might just not find anything. And then the question remains, do we play Vivictus or do we play Lathless? I guess the upside on Lathless is a bit higher. And we have the unclaimed territories for Vivictus, so alright. Let's go with Lathless and just go all in here. And then hope they don't have the Crushing Canopy, otherwise we lose Lathless, we lose Sarkon, and then we're hopelessly behind. And yep, there's a Crushing Canopy, kind of as expected. But again, we didn't have any great alternatives. And a Blanchwood Armor on the Allosaurus, which can now just kill us. Well, had we found our Black Mana for Hour of Glory, we would have been able to answer the Allosaurus. Let's see if we're close to finding Black Mana. Not quite. Alright, so maybe should have mulligan this hand since we didn't have the actual mountain in hand. So all our check lands would come into play tapped if we drew them. Since if we didn't have to take the hit from Goreclaw and friends, then we might still be alive. But I guess we would still have uh, some issues dealing with a 10-10 Allosaurus. Alright, on to the next one. Alright, we're on a draw and this hand seems acceptable. We've got Canyon and Sulphur Falls, so we've already got our mana for Nicol Bolas. Two Obraids to help us interact early. And picked up a treasure map, which is also decent. So we could go turn to a Braid, turn 3, treasure map plus Cry, turn 4, Nicol Bolas. That's a reasonable curve. Our opponent on red black, but no play so far. Uh, I think we're still okay running out of treasure map, even though our opponent might have an Abraid. Since uh, we want to probably be playing Dragon's Horde next turn, which also dies to a braid. And if not, we get to Dragon's Horde plus Cry with Treasure Map. Use every bit of mana. And Gifted Aetherborn is acceptable, dies to a braid. So I think we're still okay going for our Dragon's Horde plus Cry plan. And then we can wait on the braid for a turn or two. So opponent seems to be on straight black red. And it's going to be a Dread Shade, alright, also dies to our Braid, since they're out of black mana. So our opponent must be pretty heavily skewed towards black if they're playing Dread Shades. Alright, so what do we do with Sarkon? Sarkon's not bad, since it gives us a way to ramp out our Varric's Blade Wing. And if we just double a Braid our opponent's threats, then it's pretty safe to resolve this uh, Sarkon, so I think it's probably an okay draw. 
So we'll play the Rootbound Crag. And I think we just double braid. We could also braid plus play Sarkon. Alright, so I guess we'll just braid the Dreadshade right now. Then we get to play Sarkon. And I don't think we discard anything. But obviously we still want a plus. And then they can attack Sarkon for two, but that's okay. And then next turn we can abrade plus maybe play uh, Nicol Bolas. Opponent with never to return, taking out Sarkon, that's okay. Would rather have them kill Sarkon than one of our dragons, I think. I should have put a stop on upkeep in case we wanted to scry with our treasure map. Um, but let's see here, four, five, six. So yeah, we can play Nicol Bolas and still a braid. That seems like a reasonable play here. So let's see what our opponent discards. Discards a Fatal Push. So I'm still not entirely sure if we want to braid the Aetherborn or if we want to draw with Dragon's Horde or maybe Scry with Treasure Map. Opponent with Ravenous Chupacabra, it's going to kill our Nicol Bola, sadly. Alright, so now abrading Aetherborn is probably fine. And I think I'm okay scrying with the treasure map. If we were to hit an untapped land, we could kick Bladewing next turn if we don't scry with the treasure map. But we also have a lot of cheaper dragons we could draw that are still fine. And this way we also get to draw with the Dragon's Horde. And I don't think we keep the territory on top. Since otherwise we might risk flooding out. And uh, Nicol Bolas, obviously, pretty good draw here. So our opponent has to discard again. And we get another gold counter on the Dragon's Horde. And I guess we might as well draw now in case we draw land. Since we haven't played a land for a turn yet. And that could be important. Opponent discarded a Dreadshade to Nicol Bolas, so they must have some pretty good cards left in hand, as we see another Never killing Nicol Bolas. And eventually they're going to make some 2-2 Zombies with it. But uh, so far we got the better deal with the Nicol Bolas exchanges, I think. Alright, so do we scry now? I guess now it's okay to just take our draw step and cast the Varix Blade Wing. We could also get rid of two treasures to cast a Varix Blade Wing this turn, but I think we'll just draw. And wow, find a Lathless. Well, I guess we play Lathless first. And then probably just draw and find another Dragon's Horde, that's okay. Alright, if Lathless survives, then uh, Varix Blade Wing is gonna make an extra Dragon Token. And our opponent already used two Never to Returns and then Chupacabra, so how many more removal spells can they have? The answer is they don't. Isareth instead can return Chupacabra eventually, but there's no Chupacabras in the graveyard, so Lathless seems to be safe. And our opponent actually may be offering the trade here since they want to return Chupacabra with Isareth next turn. Uh, I don't really see a reason to block here. Don't think we want to risk losing Lathless next turn to the Chupacabra. And yet again, I think we just take a draw step. Land was actually good. Name Dragon. So now we get to transform treasure map if we want to, plus play Varix Blade Wing, or we can just play Kicked Varix Blade Wing and draw with. Dragon's Horde, or I guess we still have the option of scrying with the treasure map, so either way we still uh, get some value. So let's run out Bladewing here. And this is going to put a total of three gold counters on the Dragon's Horde, so it feels like we probably want to draw cards first, since otherwise we might not have the time to draw all the cards. Get in for six. And next turn we might even have lethal if we just uh, pump all our dragons with Lathless's ability. 
Cut kills our token, our opponent's empty handed, so I think they're dead on board now. Alright, so no reason to scry here. Just gonna play the land and then activate Lathless a bunch of times. Alright, that should be enough. Alright, so we got game one against a Black Rat midrange. How do we want to approach this matchup? I don't think we want Chandra's defeat, their threats were all black. Uh, Bloodfast could be okay if the pace slows down a bit. Doomfall could be okay since the opponent's playing a few high value threats. So those are considerations. I don't think we want an extra Sweltering Suns. Hour of Glory could be decent removal as well, but I don't know how high their curve goes. If they're playing any creatures that need exiling necessarily, then what do we take out? Magma Spray seemed pretty weak. I could see cutting a Sarkon on the draw, and I think I like the rest of the deck, so probably just gonna bring in like one Doomfall, one Hour of Glory, and uh, kind of see how they perform, and maybe make some adjustments for game three, when we have a better idea what the opponent's uh, bringing in as well. Alright, we're on the draw, and the sand seems quite good. And I think we're fine. Let's see, do we play the canyon here? I guess we might want to cycle it, so I'll play the rootbound crack for now. And yeah, I think we probably will end up cycling the canyon. Since we have the dragon sword next turn, which also fixes for black. And we already have plenty of lands in hand. There's a gifted Aetherborn, that's fine. Dies to the Sweltering Suns eventually. Not the fastest of clocks. Draw Sulfur Falls. Alright, so happy we cycled. Let's play Dragon's Horde. And then hope they play another creature that dies to Sweltering Suns. Otherwise, we can just exert Glorybringer. Alright, they had a Shatter to destroy our Dragon Sword, fair enough. So, wouldn't be playing Glorybringer this turn. Uh, I think I'm fine taking another two from the Aetherborn and then just cycling this Canyon. And I guess we should cycle now in case we draw into a treasure map or maybe in a braid. Alright, Varix Bladewing instead. So we've got some decent plays lined up here. We do have some black cards that we sided in that we're unable to cast at the moment since they killed our Dragon's Horde. So hopefully we don't draw those. And it's gonna be a Doomfall. Probably taking the Glorybringers, my guess. And now they know not to overextend into Sweltering Suns. And instead they take the Sweltering Suns. So maybe they already have an answer lined up for Glorybringer. Maybe a cast down. Well, Chandra works out better in case they do have the cast down. Since I imagine they would have taken Glorybringer if they didn't have an answer already in hand. And minusing here seems acceptable. Opponent cycles Canyon. And next turn we can just kick a blade wing, which seems pretty good. Unless they have another to return. Alright, it's a dread shade instead. Well, now it dies to Glorybringer, so thing that works out for us. Name Dragon. Plus Chandra to reveal the top card in case we find something better. Doomfall. I don't think we care about Doomfall. I think I would rather just play the Glorybringer here. get her value right away, force her opponent to answer Glorybringer, and then next turn play Kick Bladewing. And it was a cut to ribbons to deal with Glorybringer. And another Dreadshade, fair enough. Find a Dragon's Horde, so how do we do this? We can play Dragon's Horde, and then still play Kick Bladewing, yep, that works out. So we'll add mana, and Bladewing and his token will 
provide two gold counters on Dragon Sword, so we can start drawing quite a few extra cards. This does leave the Dreadshade in play for a turn cycle, but I don't think that's a huge concern. Play the Dragon Sword. And then play Kick Blade Wing. Alright, let's see how our opponent answers our 4 4 dragons. They don't know about the second Blade Wing in hand, so we're actually fine trading that off. Chupacabra. And if our opponent still has Fatal Push in their deck, they should be killing Blade Wing instead of the token. And I'll happily trade the token for the Dreadshade. Opponent does offer the trade. Alright, draw finds unclaimed territory. I think we want to draw with our horde first. And then probably plus with Chandra. And Nicol Bola seems good. Make our opponent discard. Discard's not a shatter. And then hang on to the abrade for now. And our opponent packs it in, alright, so they couldn't beat the value from our Planeswalker and our Dragon Sword. And Nicol Bolas threatening to transform next turn was just too much for them to handle. Alright, I want to thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed this gameplay. And as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for supporting the channel, and you can do so yourself as well over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd, where you get cool rewards for supporting the channel, as well as getting us closer to our goals, where with every goal reached we will release an additional weekly series, so if you want to see more content, Patreon is the place to go.